What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about wall edges. Well, when you create a wall, you want the top of the wall or edge of the wall, you want that to look interesting, you want that to look exactly how you want it to look. And Revit is not the best software when it comes to creating things exactly how you want them to look because it has its own way of doing things. Now that's of course because it it uh, does include that information about all of those models, so it is trying to help you out in the long run, but it can be really annoying at times when it comes to uh, creating certain details such as wall edges, wall tops, or just kind of ends of the wall. So in this video I'm going to be exploring different ta tactics and approaches and little tips and tricks when it comes to uh, adjusting these wall edges and making the walls look well exactly how you want them to look. Uh, now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to uh, like this tutorial it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week, I make multiple tutorials and also I make Revit courses. I make beginner and intermediate as well as advanced Revit courses. They're all available on my website balkanarchitect.com. That's going to be the first link in the description just below this video. Also the second link in the description takes you to my Patreon page where you can find all of my uh, Revit project files such as this file that we're going to be creating uh, in today's tutorial. So check it out as well. Okay so without any further ado let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So I'm going to start off by showing you some of the basic ways that Revit allows you to edit wall edges. And then I'm going to be showing you my custom way of kind of overriding and kind of hacking Revit a little bit in order to achieve a more unique wall edge if that's something that's necessary for your design. Okay, but first before we do anything, we have to start a new project. So I'm just going to go here into models go to new and for the template file I'm going to choose my own custom Balkan Arctic template file the metric version if you're interested both in the metric or imperial version of this file check out my uh, website below so that's going to be the third link in the description you can get that uh, uh, that template there okay so let's just click OK and that's going to open up Revit and as soon as Revit opens up, uh, now we can start playing around. So I'm just going to go here to walls and then uh, let's choose one of the, uh, let's go with the 300 millimeter generic one and let's place a small wall segment over here. Uh, we can select it, go to the 3D view, just to see what we have. There we go, we have a simple, uh, a simple white wall. And now let's start playing around with the top of this wall. So let's say we want to play around with the top edge. So what Revit allows you to do is it allows you to create sweeps alongside the wall. So if I go here to wall, go to wall sweep, as you can see it allows me to create these types of sweeps along the either horizontally or vertically along the face of the wall. But you can also add those sweeps as sort of a customized part of the wall, so they're always going to stick to a certain part of the wall. This allows you to create a custom or unique uh, wall top. So for example, if you want to have some sort of a parapet cap on top of your wall in order to protect the wall from rain and the other elements, uh, what you can do is just select the wall, go here into edit type, and once you're in the edit type for this wall type properties, uh, go to structure and then go into edit structure. Next, we have this preview option, which is going to stretch this out a little bit. There we go. And this preview shows you your wall. Now, currently it's set to the floor plan, but you can modify that and set it to the uh, section here. There we go. And now we can see a section view of our wall. Here we can play around with layers, but more importantly, here we have the option to modify the vertical structure of this wall. And there we have the sweeps. So currently we don't really have any sweeps and you can add them, uh, but if you try to add them you'll notice that we don't really have uh, anything that's going to work particularly for this wall. So we have to load in profile. Luckily there is a load profile button which will open up your uh, family uh, library, Revit family library. So you just want to scroll down here, find profiles, let's see profiles. Here we should have some wall profiles and here we have the parapet cap. Now also you have some additional ones that you might want to use but in this case for this particular situation we want the parapet cap. Precast. Click open. 
and now it should be loaded in so it should be available here let's see okay so here as you can see we have the m parapet cap precast and we have multiple sizes and for this wall if i remember this is a 300 millimeter wall so i'm just going to choose something that's a little bit larger than that something like this also we can set up the material here so for example for the material we can go with something i don't know it's precast so let's search for precast concrete uh, let's see here we have some precast concrete that can work click OK and then also we can play around with the distance uh, with uh, and all of that so right here if I just extend this a little bit here you can set where it is uh, being uh, measured from so in this case we want this to be on top of the wall so instead of base you can set this to top and then also you can play around with the distance now because we currently don't really see anything on our section here uh, what I like to do is hit apply and now you can see that over here and now you can play around with that a little bit you can flip it if necessary not in this case uh, you can give it a little bit of an offset also so for example here let's give it a minus zero zero five offset and then uh, did they add a zero okay there we go hit apply okay now it's kind of offset but I guess it should be a positive offset let's try that there we go maybe a bit larger let's try one here Okay, let's just hit apply. Yeah, that looks much, much better. Okay, so the next step uh, is going to be, of course, just to click OK. And there we go. So now if I zoom in, as you can see, this uh, parapet cap looks perfect. So if I just click OK, hit apply, OK again, and as you can see, that's on top of our wall. Now, of course, we can create a custom profile if necessary, and you can do that just by going here to File, then going to New, family and there you can go to uh, let's see uh, here we should have some metric profiles and let's select this metric profile there we go and we can create our own custom uh, one so I can go here to line and something that I would just like to show you in this uh, tutorial is that uh, it's not really going to allow you to create something that's going to kind of cut off the top of the wall so let's say you want to have a sort of an angled parapet cap something like this I don't know let's try yeah something like that okay so if I just load uh, let's first save it of course so let's save it on desktop as the perpet cap custom okay and now we can load that into the project and close select the wall go into edit type go into edit structure uh, go to sweeps and then here if I select that one let's see here's the custom one hit apply uh, of course we have to I think we have to switch it to interior let's see there we go interior and give it a larger offset so let's try something like this oops wrong side so let's type in here minus hit apply there we go uh, so you can play around like that, but the problem is, if I just OK out of this, is that it's not going to kind of attach the wall up to that. So if you want to use it as sort of a little roof for your wall, it's simply not going to uh, work that way. So let's just OK out of that, hit apply, hit OK, and there we go. If we go back to 3D, currently it looks like this. Now, because I don't really like the way that this looks and I don't like the way that Revit does this, let me now show you my workaround that I have figured out for these types of situations. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go here to wall and let's place a larger wall here just next to that one, just like this. And now let's explore the second option. So what they like to do when it comes to uh, creating a uh, wall edge, either on top or on the side, is I like to kind of carve it out out of an existing wall. Now, uh, unlike with this sweep, uh, you're basically adding where you're basically adding a new material. Here you can just carve out the existing wall. So let me show you how that works. And uh, now for this particular uh, situation, what you have to do is go here to component, open up the drop menu and choose the model in place option. And then uh, what you want to do is search for the same category of the family that you're using. So in this case, we want to adjust the wall edge. I would choose walls here. Now uh, you can do the same approach for floors or roofs. You would just uh, uh, search here for, in that case, roofs or floors. 
because this is the wall, let's choose the wall, click OK, and we can call it wall one, that's OK. And now we can get started. So the first thing that I do is set the work plane to the, uh, and use the pick plane for that, and just to uh, set it to the face of that wall. Now let's say we want to kind of have a filleted or some uh, kind of a soft edge of this wall, both on top and on the side. For that, I would use a sweep. And actually in most cases, you're going to use, be using a sweep. So let's choose a sweep let's go with sketch path or you can uh, go with pick lines and then basically you pick this line you pick this line perfect hit finish and then you're going to edit profile and for this profile you want the profile to be cutting into the wall so the top of the profile is going to be this that's okay then you want to go down a little bit and then I, I like to create an arc like this and then go up and actually what you want to do is move this arc so just use the move tool and move the kind of the top of the arc up to this line and then you want to move the line just a little bit above that because it's uh, it cannot touch that's a uh, rabbit is not going to like that so I like to move it just a little bit up and of course close this off on this side hit the escape key a couple of times and now hit finish finish again and nothing really happened well because we didn't use a void we just used a regular sweep so you want to go here and change it uh, in the identity data in the properties panel from a solid into a void and apply there we go and of course you want to cut it so you want to go here to cut on the modify tab just find the cut tool select the wall select the void and there we go now we have that as you can see soft edge of the wall so if I go here into finish this is what that looks like. We go to shaded. Yeah, so we have that soft edge of our wall. I really like the way that this looks and uh, I think it's much, much better in a lot of cases than using these sweeps. And also you can use it at the edge of the wall. Now, of course, it does take a bit longer and if we create another wall next to that one, of course, that wall is not going to have this over here so that's the that's kind of the downside of uh, of this because it only applies that on the actual wall now if you want to change that at any point you just need to come close to that edge and it's going to say walls one that's actually that family and when you have this edit in place option that means that you're then editing that void and you can go here into edit sweep and make some changes and finally, one more thing that I would like to discuss, and that is for creating uh, changes that basically are associated with the uh, with the presentation in the floor plan view. So let's move here into level one. We have a few walls here. That's okay. Let's create new ones. Let's go to architecture uh, wall, and then let's choose the uh, let's see one of these that have many layers. So for example, this one, and then let's create a few segments just like that there we go so now you can see the wall edge here actually I want to flip this around there we go we have the uh, here on the outside we have some brick and then on the inside we have some uh, insulation and so on also when you have two different walls like this uh, it might be a bit different the way that these two interact and you can actually play around and fine-tune that interaction by going here on the modify tab uh, going to wall joins and then selecting that element and as you can see it's going to show you where each of the layers end maybe if we switch this to realistic it's going to look even better there we go so now you have a few options you have this butt you have this meter and then you have a square off so these are all different and then first you choose which type you want to use which type of a join and then you can go to next and see what Revit has to offer when it comes to these connections. So for example, if you want this wall, if you want the finish to go all the way to the edge, you would go with this option. As you can see now, this finish goes all the way to the edge. Or if you want this wall to go all the way to the edge, then you would switch to that. And as, as you can see, then the uh, kind of this material stops over here close to the edge. Of course, you have the meter. Now, usually with this, you don't really have many options and then square off. In this case, it's pretty much the same. Uh, also, you have the display. Do you, do you want to use view settings? Do you want to have a clean join or do you want to uh, not have a clean join where basically one wall goes all the way through to the other side and the other one kind of 
smashes into that, usually you're never going to be using this. And usually by view settings, it's going to have a clean join. And also you can just disallow the join, which will have two independent walls, which aren't join altogether. So anyways, that's how you can set up these wall joins and that's how you can control the edge conditions for those walls. And one more thing for all of these walls, as you can see, if we orbit around, uh, the finished material stops here and then it doesn't close off this edge of the wall. Now, usually in a lot of cases, you want that to kind of wrap all the way around. So if I select this wall, go into edit type here under edit, I should have the uh, option to play around with the wrapping. So if I set this to uh, exterior wrap, click OK, apply, OK. As you can see now, it will wrap the exterior layers around the core layer. And then if you go to the 3D view, as you can see, that brick will kind of wrap around. It does wrap around on top, <laughs> just in the 3D view. If you uh, have a section running through this, it's not going to show that. So if I create a quick section, and let's switch this to fine. As you can see, it doesn't wrap on top, but it does show it to be pink for some reason here on top. I'm not really sure why it does that. Uh, I do find it annoying, but well, let's try it. It does have to have its own quirks. So anyways, that's how you can uh, create or edit uh, edges of different types of walls. And those are all of the approaches. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick tutorial. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. And if you would like to explore some of those more advanced courses, check out my website balkanarctic.com. You can find all of my courses, as well as my uh, Revit template over there. And also on my Patreon page, you can find all of my Revit project files. So make sure to check that out. That's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.